So you have this plethora of products going into ORs, but maybe half of them are being used. So now 50% have to come back to be restocked. So we said, how do we remediate these challenges but doing it in a way where we're utilizing artificial intelligence, robotics, machine learning, and most importantly, predictive analytics to marry the supply chain with the clinical, right? Digitize those products and optimize the way the surgeons are getting their particular products. And that's where Ada was really good. Clock in, scrub up, and join us behind the red line. You're listening to First Case, a perioperative podcast bringing you exciting interviews, engaging discussions, and innovative solutions that are changing the way patients receive surgical care. Each episode, we talk to frontline staff, perioperative leadership, and nursing entrepreneurs from across the country as they share their stories, experience, and expertise on the industry we love. From the back table to the boardroom, from wheels in to wheels out, we tackle the real-life issues affecting the OR. Whether you're tuning in for surgical service education or inspiration, we're glad you're here. And now it's time to roll back and start the first case. On this Vendor Spotlight, we are going to be speaking with Matthew Chilla, Director of Digitally Enabled Solutions and the founder of what we're going to be talking about today, the ADA Smart System. And along with him, Phil Gaby, Executive Director of Surgical Service Lines and somebody that has a lot of familiarity with utilizing ADA. And this is really about digitally transforming how we manage suture inventory. There's a component on the clinical side. Melanie, you'll be speaking a lot about that as the OR nurse on the team. And then I'll also be talking a lot about the supply chain and logistics aspects of the benefits of this solution as we have our conversation with Phil and Matt today. Yeah, Justin, I saw this in action at the AORN Expo earlier this year. And as I talked to the team, got to see it work and really saw how it could benefit our teams in the OR, I was like, we have to talk about this because this is fantastic. So I'm really excited to get to find out more of their story, to really talk about how it, how the ADA system works and really see how it can help us both on the supply side and on the clinical side. Don't go anywhere. This is going to be a great conversation today. Phil and Matt up next on First Case and Power Supply. From the studios of Healthcare HQ, you're listening to First Case. Today, Melanie and I are speaking with Matthew Chilla, Director of Digitally Enabled Solutions and the founder of what we're going to be talking about today, which is the ADA Smart System. And joining Matt is Phil Gaby, Executive Director of Surgical Service Lines. And so this is going to be a great conversation. I want to welcome you both. I know, Matt, I'm really interested to hear the why behind the ADA Smart System, but why don't we welcome Phil first? Phil, thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, Justin, thanks for having me. Matt, thank you and your team for putting this together. Looking forward to the conversation. And Phil, why don't you just tell everybody a little bit about your background and your current role in your organization, just so that they sort of get a feel for how this has really helped improve maybe processes for you and your organization. Yeah, sure, Justin. You know, came up in the supply operations side of healthcare when I started my career. And, you know, as I moved up the ladder and my career progressed, got into the sourcing, the contracting, beyond operations, and then also started to get into more of the strategic partnerships with the larger vendors to support our IDN and so forth. And then recently, I've transitioned into a role supporting all surgical services as far as growth, development, alignment with surgeons, and so forth. And one of the biggest dissatisfiers for our clinical teams, as well as a big hindrance as far as growth and efficiencies within the OR, is is supply management. 
And, you know, as we started to to get into that and understand what solutions are out there, we started asking some of our strategic partners, you know, do you have anything available outside of your traditional, you know, par bins or par excellence and so forth? And, you know, fortunately, we were introduced to Matt and his team through our strategic relationship with Johnson & Johnson. Well, that's great. And, you know, what's interesting is we're going to be putting this conversation out to both our power supply and our first case audiences. And so it, it's interesting because this really does speak to folks that are in that supply chain role, such as yourself, but then also clinicians working on the front lines, such as Melanie. And so I'm really excited to dive into this and really how sometimes that clinical integration is tough to accomplish, right? And there can be tension there. And I think it'll be really great to talk about how we can bring ease of use and, and all of that back to the table and, and help bridge those gaps. Matthew, why don't we talk a little bit about the Ada Smart System, your background, and really what you were sort of seeing in the industry that led you to develop this solution? Yeah, sure. So first of all, thanks for having us. Really appreciate it. And, you know, my background is it was really in sales. You know, I started at Johnson & Johnson as a young, younger man, just in sales, sales leadership, got into uh, commercial education and then into U.S. and then global marketing, always keeping the, you know, the customer at the forefront of things and, and looking to see how we can solve challenges around our products. One of the things that we saw from a suture standpoint was hospitals are having these unprecedented problems, right? Especially coming out of a pandemic. And sutures have always been, I think, the tip of the spear when it comes to the bane of clinicians, you know, experiences, right? Like the sutures are everywhere. They're in totes, they're in boxes, they're on shelves, they're in drawers and in cabinets and in lockers. So we said to ourselves, you know, how, how do we remediate challenges for hospitals around just the suture portfolio? Now it's gotten much bigger than that, right? But we started with sutures. And when we started to do the discovery work, we saw things like for every two sutures that go into an operating room, one comes back to be restocked. So we said, well, what's the genesis of this challenge, right? Because now you're putting this administrative burden on nurses, clinicians, supply chain people with picking products and then returning products and restocking products. And we found out that preference cards are really the, the, the problem, right? According to Owens and Miner, their Operating Room Efficiency 2023 research report, only 7% of perioperative leaders report that their preference cards are more than 90% accurate. So you have this plethora of products going into ORs, but maybe half of them are being used. So now 50% have to come back to be restocked. So we said, how do we remediate these challenges but do it in a way where we're utilizing artificial intelligence, robotics, machine learning, and most importantly, predictive analytics to marry the supply chain with the clinical, right? Digitize the inventory management process and optimize the way the surgeons are getting their particular products. And that's where Ada was really born. So, Melanie, I saw you shaking your head, nodding with Matthew as he was talking about, you know, the challenges. You know, what's your experience? Okay, so preference cards. Yeah, let's just throw those things under the bus. They're not they're not <laughs> accurate. Hardly ever. I've worked in some places where they're better, some places where they're terrible. It really just depends on your facility and how atten attentive to detail or whatever is going on there. But Sutures, you're right. Like I have sutures in my pocket at the end of the day, or they're in my locker, or they're in my bag because I dumped them out of my pocket, said I'd go put them up, and then I didn't, and I forgot. You ever found a suture packet in your car before? Yeah, I'm just <laughs> going to be honest here. But anyway, but you're right. They they end up everywhere, and I think one part of it's because they're portable. Part of it is because we are trained. If you go get one, you got to get two just in case, so you don't have to run back. So then we have more suture. I was trying to go through it and look for a suture. We didn't have it. So I had to leave and I'm going through and I was actually having to look on the shelf next to all the suture boxes, just in the stacks of sutures that had been put up on the shelves to see if I could like 
go through this deck of cards basically and find the one I needed. So I was thinking about you guys when I was at work a couple of days ago hey, because I, I was living this with yeah. my sutures. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, thank, what kind thank of you for the validation. Chain, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, what kind of like supply chain challenges does that represent for you and your team, especially as like you kind of know and probably heard yourself from clinicians in the operating room that this was a challenge, but you know, you had your own set of challenges, right? Yeah, I think everything, you know, that Matt and, and Melanie outlined is spot on, especially, you know, it's never just go grab one, you always want to grab two. And it's never, you know, let's put it back where it came from, because most of the time, you don't know where it came from. So you end up with sutures and like Melanie was saying, in your pocket, in your locker room. And unfortunately, a lot of time, they end up in the garbage. So you think about it from an inefficiency and waste standpoint, from just a suture, you know, ones or twosies per case, but then you think about how many sutures you use in a case, how many cases you have a day, and extrapolate that out. And what you have is you have the genesis, like Matt was talking about, of what is wrong within the OR environment and how clinical teams, as well as supply chain, inter interfaces and interacts with one product category in that OR, which is sutures. Mm -hmm. So Matt, one of the things we've also seen, especially over the last three plus years, are just staffing shortages, challenges. And you know what Melanie described was nurses having a lot of involvement in inventory management, which isn't necessarily their area of expertise, right? And so was that something that factored into the equation as you developed Ada was, were you looking at really just having clinicians do clinical work, supply chain do supply chain work and really remove a lot of the inefficiencies that happen in the middle ground between the two? Yeah, we were trying. Yeah, it's a great question. And we, we were trying to say, how do we get the nurse back to the patient bedside, holding the patient's hand and not having to worry about all that stuff going on around them, right? So when we built Ada, we said, you need to have some some human connection to it. A human needs to do something, but there should also be an automated factor, something where, you know, human error is taken out of the equation. And when we built the system, we built it to have three unique pieces that are configurable to however a hospital needs that system to function. But one of those pieces is the Ada kiosk, which automates a lot of the picking and automates all of the restocking. So now nurses are no longer having to pick sutures. They're no longer having to restock sutures. And that really kind of takes that burden off of them. We're hoping that, you know, in the future, when we do develop, you know, our Ada smart room concept that we're, we're calling it, that we can get the nurses out of the entire process altogether, move that over to supply chain or to materials, and just have the nurses worry about patient and what the surgeon needs, period. Well, that would be fantastic. And I would be a very happy yeah. OR nurse if that was the case. But that's, you know, you're talking about sutures. That's the goal. Yeah, <laughs> you talk about sutures. And as an OR nurse, do you know how demoralizing it is to be handed a big ice cream bucket is what it looks like, the plastic ice cream tub bucket of sutures and being told, hey, you're going to go put all these up. Like, I didn't even get them out. But that's where they've just been dumped and collected over time. And now I was the person who happened to make eye contact with the charge nurse and now <laughs> I have to go put them up. Yep. And so having that managed in some way where one, we weren't, we weren't having the extra suture that we didn't need. It wasn't being pulled. So it wasn't getting out there. And then two, having a way to manage it. So we weren't being tasked with, let's be the person who puts it all away. That's a game changer. It, and it's, it's not only just, you know, taking the nurse out of the process or even, you know, a human being out of the process. It's also all about the data and the insights. So when you're utilizing a system like the Ada Smart System, you're not only seeing what's being picked and what's being returned, but you're seeing what's being utilized. You're seeing ex expiry dates, lot numbers, batch numbers. You know, we're, we're showing average daily usage of a 
particular skew for surgeon specialties procedures. And we can now start making, you know, recommendations to hospitals, to surgeons, to staff of optimizing not only their inventory, but their preference cards as well, right? We're seeing up to, you know, 30% reduction of SKUs at some hospitals, a 50% reduction of inventory on hand, out of stocks have come, you know, I think we're seeing an average out of stock rate of sutures at around 20%. At our latest installation, it's now at 2%. So, you know, utilizing a system like this allows so many advantages for a hospital, not only from a supply chain standpoint, but from an insights value standpoint. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Just the insights, making informed decisions, making them quicker. You know, it's not colloquial. It's not just having a conversation with people who are working on the front lines who are sometimes, Melanie, you can probably speak to this. You're not always certain like, oh, if we take that off the pref card, is the surgeon going to react to that? But having some data behind it to help make those decisions and put that information in front of a surgeon really helps you clean that up because they know that what you're doing is informed. And I think that's really critical. But Matt, one thing I wanted to ask you about too, you know, is technology adoption. So like, it's great to get all of that data and all that information, but sometimes people are really resistant, you know, to adopt a new technology or adjust their process. Like how did that factor into this and maybe even go back further and talk about how you even, you know, how you develop data. I mean, you're the one that did it, you know, so how did maybe even give us that background and how you put thought into, okay, the technology has got to be something people will embrace for it to be effective. Yeah, no, it's, it's a great question. So, you know, we were sitting in a meeting back in 2017 when our president came in and said to us, we have 3,200 unique suture codes in the United States, okay, 3,200 different combinations of needle and thread. Around the world, we have over 13,000 unique combinations. We can no longer continue to make different suture combinations. We need to look at digital solutions and services. I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. I need to see something from this team. <laughs> And she walked out. <laughs> so, you know, for, for the first 10 minutes, everybody just yeah. stared blankly at each other. But I was sitting next to a colleague of mine, John Sibby. And, and you know, John's a, a little bit of a renaissance man, right? He's a marketer during the day, but an EMT on the weekends. He's patrolling the Manasquan beaches on a Sunday afternoon on a four-wheeler, making sure that nobody's drowning, right? I mean, he's just a, a tremendous tremendous asset to J&J &J and, and a true friend. And I said to John, you know, we don't have real data. And he said, what the heck are you talking about? And I said, we know when a product leaves our distribution center and when it gets to a hospital. But after that, we don't know where it's really utilized, who utilizes it for what. I mean, all of these polymers have been, you know, built by our R&D folks to do certain specific things. We have no idea where they're being utilized, you know? And then he was like, wow, I never even thought about it that way. And then, you know, we started talking about R&D and this and that. And the next thing you know, we started thinking about vending machines and how do you put a vending machine into an operating room? Or a Coke Zero freestyle machine where you just start hitting, I want, you know, I want a Coke Zero that's cherry, vanilla, and orange flavored. And then I put my cup under it and it gives it to me, right? How do you do that but for medical devices? And that's really where the genesis of this came from. But from a technology standpoint, right, it's, it had to be easy and we try to make it easy, but there's, it's, it's like it's technology. You could open up your computer today and you're on a conference call and I'm sure we've all been on a Zoom or a Teams meeting and it says, oh, an update needs to happen. And then the next thing you know, you're knocked off the Teams meeting and it <laughs> takes you another five minutes before your, your computer updates, right? So there are things that happen with technology. But one of the things I would say is Ada will cure a lot of your suture or your medical device problems but it's never going to cure people problems, 
right? That's why we've decided, you know, working with Phil and really trying to understand how do we make this easy? How do we train on technology like this? We brought in a customer change coach that does nothing but work with his staff to understand what the technology is, what's in it for them, why is it going to make their lives and their jobs easier? And that's where we really start to see adoption kind of take shape. All right. So what does it look like then? I walk into the OR. I'm going to use it. How does that work? So if you're a circulating nurse, you're really probably only dealing with our suture hubs. Our suture hubs use two pieces of technology. They've got a little touchscreen pad on them where you just choose the OR that you're coming from. And then you pull your sutures out as you need them. There's an infrared curtain on the front of that hub. So when I'm pulling that suture out, it's scanning the suture, attributing it to that operating room. And now you have in-procedure tracking of all of the products that you're bringing in on an on-demand kind of way, right? For the things that you need on demand. For the supply chain folks, when they're picking for procedures, now they either go to our kiosk, which is already automated all of the picking and put all of the, the sutures that they need for each procedure in separate lockers. So they'll just go over to the locker, open it up, take the sutures out, and they're ready to go. Or they can go to our smart shelving system. So if there's a suture that doesn't fit into the kiosk, because the kiosk holds 225 unique SKUs, but Melanie, as you know, hospitals have 300, 350, 400 SKUs on their shelves. So if there's a kind of one of those rogue sutures that's on a preference card that's not in the kiosk, we have a smart shelving system too. And that smart shelving system has all of the procedures kind of just on a, a tablet. You tap the procedure that you want to pick for and they all light up exactly where you need to go to get that particular suture. And it tells you the quantity of the sutures that you need to pick. So you'll see a two, a seven, a five, a four, and you just go over to that bin, grab that quantity of sutures and take them to the operating room. And then when you're done, you give everything back to materials and materials puts it in the kiosk for restocking. Oh, that's really cool, but I have some questions, okay? My, my nurse God, brain shoot. is going and I, I need to know these things. So you said that when they're pulling cases that they can go to these kiosks and just open it up and pull out the sutures they need for the case. So is Ada then getting a copy of the schedule? And, or the, and so how is it connecting to the patient's, to the surgery schedule so that then it knows the cases so it knows what or what to put in the cubbies? Yes, great question. So we have the preference cards loaded in our cloud-based system. And then we get a push from, let's say your EMR is Epic. We'll get a push from Epic. We'll marry the two together uh -huh. for the day. And the kiosk will just start picking for pairing those preference cards with Epic's information. Well, so it knows really cool. Dr. Mel. Yeah, it knows Dr. Melanie's thyroidectomy is at 730 in room one, and Dr. Melanie needs these four sutures. So it just starts picking for Dr. Melanie's thyroidectomy, puts it in locker number one, and then there's a digital placard that tells you surgeon, OR, procedure, time, and date. And that's wow. how I know that's the procedure I'm picking for. So then as a circulator, if I'm going to get another suture, you mentioned a different system for me to go get suture for my room. Is that correlated to the patient or correlated to the room for the day? Or does it automatically chart the suture for me connected to EMR? Great question. So we get the information to, from the EMR and we do our thing. When you're looking for an additional suture, you go right over to a suture hub that's in your core and you just grab what you need after tapping the little button. And that's where that infrared curtain is. So it scans this, the procedure, attributes it to that operating room. And now we know, but Dr. Melanie was in OR4 with her thyroid at 730. And then we can then utilize some data analytics, put that together and see that you added these three particular sutures. If that happens 10 times, 20 times, 30 times, we can start making recommendations to say, Put these three sutures on your preference card. Let the kiosk pick them for you. And the times you'll need to leave the room to go get another suture will be reduced. Yeah, that's really nice. 
to keep track of it. You know, actually, you bring up thyroidectomies. I worked with an ENT doc and I did thyroid, thyroids, parathyroids, all that stuff every Monday for a, a while. And we kept our sutures that he specifically wanted in the prep stand in the room in a drawer. And that's where those sutures always stayed. There's nobody keeping track of them. Nothing, you know, nobody knew what was going on with those sutures because they were tucked in a drawer in that room all the time. So definitely not the best exactly. way to keep track of your suture. Yep. So it's really obvious to me how the clinicians can save a lot of time with having this level of organization. But Phil, I kind of want to go over to OR materials in this case and say, how does that save, you know, your team time? Then we'll go into cost savings because, I mean, we can dive into expired product, I'm sure, just having better inventory visibility. But, but just again, from just an operational efficiency, how does this save your team time? Yeah, I think so. And Matt started getting into it earlier. It's technology adoption. So if the teams are willing to adopt the new technology, the, the efficiency from a time operating with a, a, a autonomous digital environment, which is very appealing to some people, is tremendous. So you're no longer having to you know pick from as Melanie described earlier, multiple suture trees based on certain product categories, service lines have their own sutures on, on this side of the, the core and so forth. And it's all centralized in an environment that ties into your digital pick list for the day that essentially does the work for you through the autonomous pick, picking process through the robotic arm in the core for the ADA system. And then when you decide to go outside of the autonomous picking, as Matt described, and you're, you're going through your cases for the day, the shelving lights up on where you have to go find how many you're supposed to pick based on the case and that surgeon's preference cards. So if you think about that interaction from that product category supplies is so much different than anything else that that materials person, whether it's a clinician or a true materials management interacts with supplies in the OR, it, it really becomes the old cliche, you know, Interacting with sutures is night and day different than any other product category that I have to deal with. And then beyond that, when you think about how that product moves from a digital footprint, as far as picking, putting back, and then measuring utilization, then having the ability to dive into the insights that that gives you or gives us as the materials management team or that executive leadership team to say, okay, you know, Unfortunately, I think every hospital is in the same issues today, whether, you know, you're, you're having trouble with rising costs, you don't have enough staff, you know, how do you scale back on spend, whereas there's inefficiencies? Well, ADA is a perfect example of how you're able to leverage process and technology to gain insights and the ability to aggregate actionable data to make those decisions on where there are inefficiencies inefficiencies in your OR. Now, the only drawback right now is it's just around sutures. So, you know, <laughs> what what we'd like to see and what we're partnering with Matt and his team on is how do we, you know, we were along for the journey with the suture platform. And now how does it expand from there to go from sutures to the next product category and so forth until ultimately then you're taking that environment for that materials management person, as well as the insights you're able to gain and make those decisions on to being spread across your entire OR system. You know, we keep using the word insights, but Matt, you and your team have definitely used it because you've titled it the ADA Insights Engine. So this is really where a lot of those efficiencies are derived and guided, I would say, by real insights around, you know, actual usage, right? And so we've touched on a lot of this, but I, I also want to say like that preference card piece, you can wrap this up under a category of just optimization in general, right? Like sometimes you see it on the instrumentation, as Melanie said, you've always got to have backup instruments to make sure that, you know, if one of them is, you know, not in good condition that you've got the extra and that's where we see a lot of like waste kind of built in. And so now um, you're able to really reduce 
sort of like the amount that gets picked for a case and has to be restocked. But what about the actual number of SKUs that are used? Are you able to go to the surgeons and say, hey, look, you know, these are kind of one offs. But, you know, now we've talked to the Johnson and Johnson team and these are really close. Like, can you actually take the the SKU inventory and, and lean that out a little bit as well? Yeah, uh, let me jump in there a little bit, Matt. I, I think you said it well when we started on this with the preference card. You know, things go things go on, but they never really come off. So if you think about that from a card standpoint, physicians turn over, they leave, they retire, they go to a new hospital. So you think about it from their suture inventory and and, and how inefficient it is today. Well, that suture category that may get used once or twice a year after that surgeon left, gets moved around, gets expired, gets thrown away. But when you see that, you know, the shelf or shelves it's on is being low, that person says, okay, well, I have to reorder it anyway. So when you think about that perpetual cycle taking place within the whole product category of sutures, without those insights, you just continue to repeat that. But now, if you have the ability to understand the utilization based on picking, based on returning, based on a digital footprint and an integration with your preference card, you are then able to reduce that inventory or at least identify the inventory where you have the opportunity for reduction. What about your confidence in the inventory? Like, I I mean, I know we talk about kind of like having a lot added to the preference card, but even from, I mean, just look at the battle with back orders these days, right? Like uh, just, just a total difference from where we were five years ago and, and everybody's living with it. But I would imagine too, that a lot of times you wind up over ordering for that just in case scenario, or because you're like, Hey, I don't know exactly what we have. Have you been able to lean it out that way too? And sort of like kind of decrease the amount of inventory that's just kind of sitting there that's on hand. Yeah. I I mean, you, you think, you know, and before we got into this project, you know, it's a suture and you know, who cares? All you know is you need a lot of them. You need a lot of sizes and you need a lot of variety of them, but what we've learned or what I've been able to learn just for having such a, a close eye and, under, and want to understand, you know, what insights are we going to uncover from this? A lot, there's a lot of redundancy in suture where it's, you know, well, one size is just a little bit longer than the other size. However, that's two different SKUs, two different opportunities for it to expire, go missing or so forth. But then, okay, can you go down to, to can you lessen one of the sizes and, and so forth? And then that's where you rely on, you know, Matt and his team and the clinical team from Ethicon and even, you know, some, some non-Ethicon companies to come in and say, okay, Here's where we want to reduce our inventory, help our clinicians understand where we can and where we can't based on that clinical side. We have the data based on, you know, now based on what you advise us to do, where can we start pulling back? So to to answer your question, with that also allows us to understand just like we do with a lot of our suppliers today, given the environment of back orders, you always want to understand have the ability to lock into or or be able to pick out, all right, if this goes on back order, what's my sub? Then you still do that planning with your suture portfolio or your planogram. And then you have those subs ready to go built into the ADA system where if one SKU goes out of stock, the system will then say, okay, this is out of stock on back order. Here's your sub. Let's put it in your approved sub. Let's put it in this place and start a order. And it just automatically does it. You're not scrambling after the fact. It's all preemptively determined. Yeah, as long as you build your quote unquote suture management program around that to start out with when you begin (laughs) your journey with the ADA team. But in the old days, if you built that out, it was on a spreadsheet somewhere and you weren't really sure if everybody was on the same page anymore. And now you have an interface that is sort of making sure that you have really clear visibility at any given time. So Matt, let me just ask you, like this seems, I mean, to me, very innovative and disruptive. Is like anybody else even tackling this issue in any other way than kind of what Phil said was the state of the market? This is the way we always did it? 
Yeah, I, you know, I, there, there's other inventory management opportunities or, or, or manufacturers out there, solutions out there, but nobody is tackling the supply with the, the, like we said, the genesis of the problem, which is those preference cards, right? And we're marrying both of those together to not only optimize all of the products, but to optimize the way the surgeons work. And that I think is what truly makes Ada difference or di differentiating and could be the market disruptor that, you know, we're looking to be. Yeah, because Justin, there's nothing right now where if you bring a product back, if the product picks for you based on your preference card, and then you bring that product back and you can continuously bring that product back, the recommendation is going to be take it off of your card. There's nothing that gives that, cl that clinician or that data science, that data scientist, that recommendation to say, hey, you're not using this. You're continuing to return it you might want to remove it from your card and no longer pick it. So then you no longer pick it. Then the question becomes, do you no longer stock it? And, and you're able to garner those insights. Again, there's that word, the insights from the ADA system on how to then streamline and right size your inventory. We sat down with Phil one day, you know, taking just general surgery procedures, let's say, and we saw a 130% difference in suture pricing from one surgeon to another surgeon, right? And we saw one surgeon utilized four sutures and one surgeon utilized 13 sutures all for the same procedure. So it was like eye-opening stuff that nobody looks at today. But when you sit down with those surgeons you know, in the past, you would say, hey, I really feel like you should do this. And the surgeon would say, no, this is the way I've always done it. But with the ADA system, now you can say, doctor, this is your data. This is truly what you utilize. And this is what we're recommending you to do about it. And here's your call to action. It's powerful stuff. You know, I heard Phil say, I want more. <laughs> and I heard you talk a little bit about the Ada Smart Room, which is clearly what's on the horizon, Matt. So why don't you paint a picture for the vision of the future with everything that you're doing at Ada before we kind of get some closing thoughts here and tell everybody how they can learn more? Yeah, we just presented Phil and his team at his health system, the new Ada Smart Room concept and some of our prototypes that take all of this interaction, all of these insights, all of this lighted picking technology, and we moved it from sutures and brought it to the rest of the products that are in the operating room today. So we're really on the precipice of, you know, moving all products into an ADA smart room and ecosystem without changing any of the infrastructure that's currently at the hospital today, utilizing Bluetooth technology, you know, like I said, pick to light tags and things like that. It's, it, it's, it's going to be something very special. And I'm very excited about it. Excellent. All right. So I do want to let everybody know that you can reach out to the ADA team directly by emailing Ada at its.jnj.com. Ada is A I T A. So I'm going to say it one more time A I T A at its.jnj.com. And you can get more info on the Ada Smart Room. You can also learn by going to their website, adasolution.com. Again, A I T A solution. Dot com to learn more and also request a demo, which I think you did a great job of explaining this process to us today, both of you. And I love the robotic arm and the lights and just how you kind of get visually directed. But I still want to see a demo personally. I want to see it in action. So definitely want to encourage everybody who's listening to do that as well. Melanie, any questions that you want to add before we get final thoughts? I know that we've hit on it already and we've talked about efficiency and we've talk, talked about improving operations, but a huge pain point in the OR for OR staff is inventory. When inventory rolls around and we've got to stand there and count suture, 
having that assistance to take that off our plates, I think is a, is a real benefit. And I'm, I'm, I'm envisioning ways that ADA with all of the data that it collects can solve that suture counting inventory pain that we experience every quarter, right? So when, when you talk about that pain, you'd be able to go to your ADA insights engine or your ADA gateway, and you have a digital twin right there of everything that is in your particular pieces of hardware. So you'll see in the kiosk, what's green, yellow, red, right? Meaning what's plenty of inventory kind of getting ready to, to need to be ordered and then what needs to be ordered. But you'll also get what's expiring, how many are expiring, where they're located. You don't have to do those you know, walk around every OR anymore to look for expired suture or count sutures. The counts are done. The expiry is there. And it tells you 60, 90, 120 days before something expires. Hey, this is expiring. This is where it's located. You may want to go get it at this date. Right. Wow. Before, I love that. You know, you yeah. can saves a lot of time on many, many levels. And, and yeah. there's there's value here for so many stakeholders within the operating room and the hospital itself. Yeah, definitely. The efficiency of just going to a screen and pulling up the data. OK, I'm done. I have it. Here I am. Instead of the hours of counting and digging and finding and hunting and everything else that we normally do. Yeah, Phil's team actually one day needed to do a, an inventory report, Melanie, just like you're saying, and wanted to know what the value of that inventory was. They went to their Ada Insights engine, printed off a PDF, and it told them the exact value of all the sutures in each piece of their hardware, how many SKUs were there, how many eaches were there, so on and so forth. So it's, it saves valuable, valuable time. All right. Well, I really enjoyed this whole discussion. And I think seriously, incredibly innovative when you just think about inventory management and you just don't see anything like this in the operating room today. And, you know, Phil, I want to thank you for kind of sharing your experiences, you know, somebody that has actually utilized the ADA smart solution that has reaped the benefits of having that implemented at your facilities and really being able to speak to the supply chain and materials management perspective, because it really is a collaboration. I mean, to find those efficiencies in healthcare, it requires, you know, suppliers and innovative technologies. It requires clinicians to work closely with supply chain and materials management. This is such a great story of how to take all three of those and synergize them into something that I think is really transformational. So, Phil, thank you again. And uh, anything you want to add before we wrap up? No. Um, first of all, th thanks for having me, Justin. And, you know, obviously, Matt, continue to thank you every day of let letting us be part of your journey and, and your innovation and helping transform our operating room environment. And, and you know, beyond what we talked about today with sutures and, you know, everything that Ada is currently doing, I'd just like to say that being part of the journey with Matt and his team has allowed us or, or has made us think differently within our OR and just understand one, highlight all of the inefficiencies, but also start questioning those inefficiencies. Whereas before it used to be, well, that's how we've always done it. And now it's like, well, yeah, we always do it this way. But if we just sit down and take a step back and say, well, that's how we always done it. How can we do it differently? And how can we be more efficient at that? And sometimes the answer is partnering with the vendor community, just like what we're doing with supplies and, and, and ADA and so forth. But also sometimes the answer is within your own hospital walls. But again, what it's being part of, you know, working with Matt and his team, they have helped us bring out those ideas from the OR where traditionally everyone's just always said, well, you know, I come to work and I and I interact in the OR this this same way every single day. But uh, again, just want to thank Matt and his team for helping us, challenging us to start thinking differently. I got to tell you, Phil, I, I appreciate that, but this would never happen unless you had a 
partner that was willing to really take a risk. And there's not a lot of hospitals out there that say, uh, me first, right? I want to go first. And Phil was one of those guys that said, look, we we may not be on the cutting edge of innovation from a supply chain standpoint, but we are when it comes to surgery and we want to bring that innovation over to, you know, materials management and marry the two. So we could never have done this without somebody who was truly willing to take a risk and a shot with us. And, you know, we couldn't, we couldn't thank them enough. Well, a great success story, you two. Thank you so much for coming on and, and sharing that story. And I'm looking forward to having you come back, Matt, and hearing about the Ada Smart room and, and see how far you've taken this concept. You know, I think there's a lot of potential here to just continuing to grow that the value offering. Give us six or seven months and we'll be talking again soon. That was Matthew Chilla, Director of Digitally Enabled Solutions and the founder of ADA, as well as Phil Gaby, Executive Director of Surgical Service Lines. And Melanie, we had a really great conversation today, really coming from two different points of view. One, that supply and logistics point of view, where there's just a lot of inefficiencies right now around the management of sutures and a lot of waste. And I just know that as we continue to project forward in healthcare, we're going to need to leverage technology to help us work more efficiently and reduce waste. And you just think about the waste in terms of, you know, expired product restocking and all the manual effort that goes into managing sutures. And you've seen it all too well, just in practice in the operating room. Oh my goodness, yes. When you see a gigantic bucket of suture because people don't want to take the time to put it away, they're too busy to put it away, they are so many extra suture got pulled for the case, whatever the issue may be. And now you have this bucket full of suture that you've been tasked with putting away. It can be very depressing. But also finding sutures in every nook and cranny of the OR because they get tucked in various corners. You can't keep track of your supply. You can't keep track of your expired items. You can't keep track of what you do and don't have. And then when you need a suture, you might not always have it on the shelf. So being able to fix that to keep up with our supply and to keep up with all of our sutures is a game changer for everybody. Yeah. And then the insights of just understanding what sutures were used in which cases or which procedures to have those, you know, insights, I think is incredibly important. And they're not going to stop there. It's not just sutures. Ada's vision is to continue to disrupt and transform hospital asset management. So I'm looking forward to seeing what's on the horizon and what's coming next. If you'd like more information, email ADA at its.jnj.com. That's A-I-T-A at its.jnj.com. You can ask for more information on the ADA Smart Room and visit their website, adasolution.com, to learn more and request a demo. Again, A-I-T-A solution.com. That's going to do it for this vendor spotlight. On behalf of Melanie and myself, thank you for listening. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of First Case. As a reminder, you can help support us by subscribing to First Case on your favorite podcast app or by downloading the smartphone app on iPhone or Android. Simply search for First Case in the App Store or Google Play. The best thing about downloading the smartphone app is that you can access bonus content for certain episodes and view episodes in certain categories, like articles on the go and vendor spotlights. Are you following us on LinkedIn or Facebook yet? If you are and you love an episode or post, then let your social network know about it. Like, comment, or share our posts along with your thoughts and keep the conversation going. If you have any topics or guests that you would like to recommend for a future episode, just send us an email to info at firstcasemedia.com. We look forward to hearing from you. This is submission ID US underscore ETH underscore WOUN underscore 3022. Four zero.